Hello, everyone, Hello, everyone. And, and welcome, welcome to, to another, another edition of Space Snacks. Snacks. I'm, I'm really glad, glad that you're here this, this morning, morning because, because I have Dr. Dr. Uliana Orodisky. Yay! Yay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was great. That was great. Uh, Uliana, you go by Uli. Uli. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really it's great really to great finally connect, connect with, with you. you. You as well. Yeah. You know, I we've been following, following each other's each careers, careers, and uh, <laughs> this is our first <laughs> time ever getting a chance, chance to, chat. to chat. Yeah, I feel like it's I feel like it's a great, um, um, environment, environment because, because I know you I love, love food. food. I know, I know you love space. space. Uh, tell, uh, us tell us a little, little bit about your about background. Your background. Yeah, so um, my background was kind of all over the place because as a kid, I just loved everything about science and about being outside. Uh, so it wasn't really until in my adulthood that I was able to combine those kind of passions into a career. I'm like, wow, you can do that. Um, so to give you an idea, as a kid, like I played soccer, I did track and field, um, lots of running, um, mostly like sprinting. Um, Me too. Yeah, and I, I never really kind of got into long distance running which turns out is really good for mountaineering which is what i do now <laughs> oh, i kind I of really this morning so yeah. yeah i just really didn't like it but then it's like it's something that you just continue to work at and then there's this kind of this freedom that happens after a while when you're running and it's just kind of this this primitive feeling if you will that gets evoked so i kind of finally found that uh, within my athletics um, and then at the same time as a kid i was working on all sorts of science projects science fairs um, solar sails you know traveling in space yeah. uh without fuel just sunlight um and then when i got to college i was like let me try out some of these geology classes because i tried some of the astronomy and astrophysics which were were great but really hard classes and i still found myself wanting to just uh, just veer outside um and so uh, in college i switched over to a geology major as a result and never regretted that decision because you know it's just you're able to go out right now right here to the terrain. And here I live out in, in Colorado, the mountains are just outside, you know, the, the window there. Being able to blend those two passions um, was huge for me, you know, because I thought I'd have to choose one over the other. And that would have been a very hard choice. You know, I love that story because I also have a geology degree. And, and similar, similar well, I was a track, track runner, runner sprinting, sprinting runner, yeah. runner, <laughs> working on the distance thing. Glad to hear that there's a possibility <laughs> of me <laughs> liking, liking it. it. But, but finding, finding geology, geology and, 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 and the landscape and, and connecting, and being, being outdoors. outdoors. Yeah. 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 And so, and what, so about what about space, space though? Because I know yeah. about space. space. Yeah, so as a kid, I, I wanted to be an astronaut. You know, it's just one of those things you, you see um, on TV, see in the books. My parents got me um, this uh, subscription to something called Secrets of the Universe. I don't believe it's around anymore. Uh, so what they did was they would send like papers, you know, with like hole punches already in them to put into a binder. And every week would be like a different topic. Either it'd be like specifically space related, um, like Mars or the moon, or it would be like wormholes and, and time travel and things, kind of science fiction. So it kind of really evoked my imagination about like, man, I think this would be really neat to, uh, to do something within the realm of space. So the, the science project I mentioned and the one I did in high school with solar sails was kind of a foray into that, you know, space technology and, and trying to get the solar sail to Mars. Is it actually even feasible? Um, and then I worked in an observatory at Rice University for a couple of years, which is <laughs> the skies weren't ideal, right? Like <laughs> in Houston. Um, yep. <laughs> um, so yeah, I still like to integrate uh, astronomy into um, expeditions that I go on now because you know you get beautiful views um, of the night skies. Um, and then the astronaut dream is still alive. You know, I've uh, applied again uh, this this call. Um, and then have been involved with Project Possum, so citizen science uh, astronautics. Yeah, I want to talk to you about all of these things. Um, and it's interesting because I think you're about 20 years younger than me. And I also grew up with a love of space. Um, I, I, I'm turning the wrong way. It's a follow thing to my dad. I was born on Guam. And, but I also are the road to astronaut through the military, the military. and because yeah, i right. come out of the Apollo era and things like that. that 
And so, and so but I got when I, got when when I was 16, yeah, yeah. Uh, that changed yeah, that a lot of stuff. Mm. stuff. And, so, and so, what about, what about you, you and flying? Have you ever thought about getting your pilot's license? I have thought about it, yeah. So I have some experience. Um, so uh, with Jason, he's the uh, the head of Project Possum. He's taking me out in his Mooney. Uh, so that's always yes. fun. Um, and then um, we went to Baffin Island. And we had a third person, Jorge. Uh, he's a pilot. So um, I flew with Jorge from Boulder all the way up to Baffin Island in the Canadian Arctic. <laughs> so it's, it's to just off the west coast of Greenland. So way up there. Um, for a science project looking at impacts of pollution um, on snow and ice up there. And we thought it'd be cool to uh, kind of lessen our, our carbon footprint, since that's what we're, we're looking at, you know, carbon on snow and ice, by flying a Cessna 210. Um, oh. it, was, it was amazing. <laughs> and like, obviously, I wasn't, I'm not a pilot, but um, he handed over the controls to me a few times and taught me a few things, you know, as we were flying. And it was five days of flying and multiple pit stops and like the further north you got the worse the runways were and ice here yes. we had to hand pump fuel and get ice off the wings so i had a lot of aviation experience that way but as far as like growing up and doing it we just didn't have the funds for it and mm -hmm. i kind of funneled more of my money into uh, mountaineering because i thought being really physically fit and uh, experiencing extreme environments would be a great analog for you know astronaut training but also just driven by the love of mountains um, more so like I love flying and I absolutely would love to uh, if there's a chance to get more training in the future to continue on with that um, but that's really what was the limitation it's not for lack of love just funds <laughs> yeah no I completely understand I didn't get my pilot license until I was well in my 30s because, because of that, that funds no, no it, it, where do you, you want to explore? Do you, you want to go, go to the moon? moon? You're and obviously you're exploring Earth. Earth. Yeah. So, so do you want to go to the moon? Do you, do you want to go to Mars? Mars? Do you want to go to the International, International Space Station? Station? All of the above. <laughs> well, I mean, if I had to choose, like, um, I would have said years ago that it was all about Mars, right? And I still love Mars. But then when I think about it, um, and actually I have a T-shirt. Let me show you. i got to pan down my camera to show you this T-shirt. Look at that. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Beatles, right? Music, astronauts, the moon, Earth. <laughs> Perfect. Um, yeah, it blends off everything. I just need some uh, some food in there, too. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I would say the moon because of that view, you know, to be able to see the Earth and just see like, wow, everything that has ever existed and still exists is there. Basically, like what Carl yeah. Sagan says, right? Yeah. It's just really, I would think life changing and life affirming like like this is it you know so i think the moon for that reason it really appeals to, uh, that's kind of where everything uh started that was the first celestial body you know uh, we ventured to so i think from the history perspective since i really love history too like i love everest because of all the history around it too um that's kind of a driver for me Oh, I, I love that. I'm definitely a moon girl. girl. And um, the, uh, idea the idea of the first, of the first female, female walking, walking from the moon. Yeah. And that right. and and the person's and alive. alive. And, and we just, we just don't know who it is yet. Right. And so, and so if you're going to go to the moon, moon what do you want to eat? eat? <laughs> uh, well, healthy or not healthy, right? Like the. <laughs> I, I think. Your ideal meal, because if you could take one meal with you, ah, okay. regardless if it was healthy or not, what would it be? Well, it'd be surreal to have a salad on the moon, right? So, <laughs> so definitely on, on the, the health vegetable side of things. Um, as a mountaineer, I'm always promoting, you know, like good nutrition. So, mm -hmm. so uh, salad, uh, some kind of great protein. So I just made this amazing recipe uh, or tried it. I didn't make it. Sorry. <laughs> tried out this amazing Mexican uh, recipe um, of this spicy chicken called uh, Tinga. So man, if I could package that up and freeze dry oh. that, it's so tasty. It's unbelievable. Like, and one of the things, right, like when you go into space, at least in the International Space Station, they do flavor the food a lot because you lose mm -hmm. that sense of taste, right, because of all the fluids. So I think the Tinga, for that reason, <laughs> Oh, that's great. Choice. And then, yeah. of course, 
like a little treat at the end is I, I'm a sucker for that astronaut ice cream. I really love it. You know, I like normal ice cream, but just like the, the, the way it's packaged and it's like a wafer and then you bite into it and then it melts in your mouth. Like, there's something about that. And like, I'm actually lactose intolerant, but I still love that stuff. <laughs> That's funny, funny. To, 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 to eat something, something that you know, know it's going to make a little bit of havoc, havoc. but you, have it, <laughs> you just got to do it. Yep. it. You bring a good <laughs> point about, about spices. spices. And, and the need, the need for, spices. for spices. Do you have, Do you a, have favorite a favorite spice? spice? Ooh. Well, I like, let's see. A, I like a blend of spices, I would say. <laughs> That's what really does it for me. So, like, you could have, like, the chipotle, like, pepper, right? <laughs> But then you can also add oregano, which is kind of an interesting, like, how did, how would that work? So that was the blend that was made for this, this, this tinga that I found like that was something new. I had never experimented with. Uh, but as far as on the sweeter side of things, cinnamon, I love cinnamon and things, you know, so I would say the sweet side of cinnamon and then on the, the spice kind of side, the chipotle with oregano and... Gin I like ginger too and things. Ginger adds a nice flavor. So yeah, what about you? I'm curious what you like to I I'm a garlic garlic holic. Oh, of course. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's just big chunks of garlic in anything. I'm happy. Yeah. Uh, garlic soup. Seriously, garlic soup. Oh. Right. In Nepal they eat a lot of that. Yeah. <laughs> Down when I was doing um the Inca Trail and and Machu Picchu, Machu Picchu, the same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. No, it's good because like also just for health, you know, for health mm -hmm. reasons, just having that garlic. And actually the, the recipe I, uh, I followed the other day had tons of garlic in it too. So um, Ukrainian cuisine, because my uh, family background is Ukrainian, they also use a lot of onion and garlic. And it just, it brings out these flavors. Um, the, you could do it yeah. like in eggs, right? Eggs, scrambled eggs. It's like, oh, that's not always ideal. Like I don't always eat so much of it. It's like, oh. But you add some fresh onion and garlic and it changes it. Or the chipotle. Ooh. That sounds fantastic. <laughs> so you just mentioned your background of Ukrainian. And I know that your husband is Mexican, right? Yes. So it, you've been able to blend those two worlds in culinary ways? So I haven't blended yet. That's a, I've been thinking about how to do it, actually. Like, we've done separate, right? Like, the Ukrainian dishes, you have the beet soup. Um, you can have, there's a lot of potatoes, you know, a lot of potatoes that are eaten. Uh, but I guess we have put like Tabasco sauce and like uh, chipotle pepper on the Ukrainian stuff. So if that counts, <laughs> um, but a blended dish would be very interesting to try out for sure. I'm thinking uh, some kind of pierogi mm. with like, like Mexican, Mexican spice chicken. Or oh, like carnitas with yes. potato Ooh, yes. and chipotle with pepper. Peasant. I might have to try. Uh, that sounds I might be up in Colorado for dinner. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a. I've already entered your contest with, with another recipe, but I know. I to... <laughs> yes, you can you can enter multiple times. So All right, cool. Be afraid to throw in some more things there. So I'm gonna have to. It sounds like you're a cook and not a baker. Yeah, you know the reason why for that is kind of the we follow like Whole Thirty for eating, so like no grains, um, no dairy, no sugar. You know, just and, and the reason why is like I used to have really bad pains with training hard, which I thought was like maybe I'm just not fit enough. <clears throat> Excuse me. But then it's like, well, I have these pains even when I'm trained. Like um, the other day having some knee flaring pains and I'm like, oh, I had sugar. You know, I, I snuck some of those energy chews. So. That's the hardest thing. I completely understand. As I gotten older, when I was in my track career in undergrad and stuff, I could eat anything. But then I started having digestive issues and... Mm -hmm. I ended up having a SIBO, which is small intestinal bacteria, wow. overgrowth, and, and having to redo my diet. Right. And the inflammation. Yeah, no exactly. Before. Can't do gluten. Uh, but the sugar. I am. I know it inflames me, but kind of like you and dairy. Every once in a while. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we'll still like, we'll have like uh, a day that we'll reserve for like, okay, whatever you want, if you want some chocolate, if you want pizza or whatever, you know, because you shouldn't deprive yourself because then that's when things go awry. Um, so we, we tend to like eat as much health as possible, you know, healthy as possible with a good blend of carbs, um, you know, it comes in the form of potatoes for athletics, potatoes are great, uh, vegetables, lots and lots of vegetables is key. Uh, it's healthy, you know, all the nutrients you need in there, a good source of protein, and then healthy fats. Like we discovered that oils like olive oil and avocado oil are much better for cooking as well. Yeah. 
and then ghee you know that that butter where you remove the uh the milk fat i saw it, your recipe for how to do that which is fantastic. yeah it's seriously like for cooking at high heat right like if it's just mm -hmm. butter it burns and then it smokes mm -hmm. in the uh, in the apartment so it's like because like one time i didn't have clarified butter yet already yet but i'm like you know, i really want to use butter wow did it smoke so i'm like oh, i hadn't really realized that before um so yeah and it's you know it's a healthier kind of fat because honestly that's what gives a lot of flavor right you have the garlic onion but also the oils that you use uh -huh. but you can keep that healthy too um so yeah i think the the inflammation part was very interesting to find out that sugar was doing that because i'm like man these pains like what is this and then getting rid of it and realizing wow this works it's not just anecdotal you know been collecting like well i mean it is to an extent but um, I, like, I, I totally understand i was doing things where i would ride a bike and i couldn't walk the next day and my legs like shred it and i couldn't figure out what was going on because i'm like oh i'm athletic i'm in shit and then and now, now, now I have no excuse, have no excuse. because <laughs> getting rid of the gluten has made a big made a difference in my life. In my life. Um, eating uh, cleaner, like you, like you said, a lot more a pure. Lot more We've pure. got a garden. Do you guys oh, have nice. a garden? Sorry? Do you have a garden? No, grow? unfortunately, we don't have the space for it here. But like, that's gotten me thinking about hydroponics, though. I'm like, yep. hmm, could I potentially grow some of my own tomatoes here with hydroponics? So that might be an experiment in the future here. <laughs> I would love to hear that. And if you do, I definitely want you to come back on and tell us more. Um, cool. I want to get to you being an analog astronaut yes. and participating in HERA. Yeah, so HERA is the human exploration research analog uh, that NASA runs. It's this isolation and confinement experiment and so it's at this point, it's gotten to like 45 days um, missions. But at the time I did it, it was still these uh, 30 day campaigns. So, yeah, there's my team. Uh, so we had an actual NASA flight surgeon as part of our team, um, an engineer and a bodybuilder who'd also did stuff in biochemistry. So very interesting mix of people. Um, and we're holding the Explorers Club flag there, which is um, a club in New York City that promotes exploration of everything, land, sea, sky and space. Um, so. We were locked in that little habitat there uh, for 30 days. So I think it's like 650 square feet total. So there's, I'm using my pointer, realizing I'm not pointing at anything. Um, there's a two level. So the bottom level is kind of like that lab area you see there with the door open, uh, the lab area. And off to the left side there is where there's uh, an airlock where we would take private calls and we would have our blood taken. Uh, they would sample that. The hygiene module, right? That's our bathroom. And then the upstairs area would be like the gym, um, the kitchen area. And then there'd be another ladder up into the very top part of the habitat where we would sleep on uh, these amazing Tempur-Pedic mattresses. It was like more comfortable than what I have at home. So um, yeah, it was a very interesting experience because it's an actual mission. Like I think it's 750 days condensed uh, into that 30 day simulation. So the whole time you're in there, really you're spending time prepping for a two day sampling mission um, where you're, you know, everything's done virtual, like virtual reality um, with headsets and with um, flight controls and things. Um, but, you know, you treat it as it's real. Like we have these two days to get everything done, but it's not just about getting things done. It's keeping your team safe first and foremost. Um, so I was the commander. So, you know, it's my job to like manage all that stuff. And when we're actually on the virtual mission, there's a delay with mission control. Right. So if I wanted permission for something, I'd have to wait like 10 minutes round trip to be like, yep, do it or nope. <laughs> so I'd have yeah. to make some of those calls on my own. Yeah. So I, I imagine one, one, that's, that's a, a really, really small space. Because yes. I did a high space, space, which was 900 right. square feet. And, and, and this is, is <laughs> yeah, tiny. <laughs> and you're with people for 30, 30 days. days. And as and the commander, did you, did you learn, learn about, about yourself? yourself? that you didn't, didn't know, know before you win it. win it. Absolutely, I definitely learned a lot more about leadership um, and everyone was older than me um, and mm -hmm. everyone had come from different experiences, a lot more life experience and two of them were in the military, you know, so they were, they said they were used to taking orders from whoever it would be. Um, but at the same time, I'm the type of leader where I like to uh, ask for feedback, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it's group decisions, you know, ultimately I'll make the final decision, but I always like to uh, involve the team because they're, they have so much more experience. You know, I, I have my expertise in one area, so I definitely listen to people. Um, and yeah, so I just learned about more, you know, assertiveness on certain things, 
was would have been better. And then scaling it back in other um, situations where it's like, well, that probably wasn't the right response in that moment, but we're stressed out and we're sleep deprived and well, it happens. So just kind of accepting that responsibility that like you have a component to when mm-hmm. things go wrong as a team, but also um, having self-awareness much more than ever before of like things like mood, right? Yeah. Like how that can affect everyone. Um, for everyone, I mean, not just myself, but like being able to read people's moods and be like, is this the right time to approach or or not about this situation? And then watching myself if I'm in a bad mood and not taking it out. So those are huge life lessons that apply to personal life too, you know, in marriage, um, in, in any professional working relationships. Those are, that's just a very good skill, communication and self-awareness. You know, I would bring up a really good point, and I want to get into the food that you eat yeah. there, because food and mood. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, I like that. Yeah. So, tell us about the food you ate during those thirty days. So there were no Snickers bars, right? Hangry, grab a Snickers bar. So, um, so the food was actually surprisingly good. Um, so it did. It was like um, leftover food from the International Space Station, um, and so I still had the Velcro. Uh, on it. And oftentimes I, I would think it was a bit too spicy, but then I realized, well, it was made for the International Space Station. So of course, knowing yeah. that the fluid retention and all that, um, we had these interesting breakfast bars that we were testing. So for like half of the month, we would eat these breakfast bars and they would make us uh, weigh them <laughs> afterwards <laughs> to see how much we ate. And like by the end of two weeks, we're like, eh. Half the bar is still there. Three quarters of the bar is left behind because you just get sick of it. It's just these four different flavors that you would uh, go through. But I I like the idea because it's very nutritionally dense um, and it has the uh, caloric needs there. But it just got boring. So that's the thing. Like, how are we going to make space food not boring? How do we keep it interesting? And so we would heat up these packets with syringes of hot water or in our little um, toaster oven, mix and match things and try, you know, try some of that but not much experimentation i wish yeah. i had done more of it then i do yeah. creative creatively cooking um, when i did the high school for months, months it was specifically, it was specifically funded by now oh wow cool. like so we, so spent, so we two spent two days, days eating like you were eating just add water and heat and heat heat and then, and two, then two weeks of being able to creatively cook, cook that's with nice. great fried fruits, fruits and vegetables for the entire yeah. four months, we alternated two and two. Wow. How did you find that? Well, the creative cooking just was the thing. I, yeah. I love to cook anyways. But it was fun to see who in the crew were, you know, food was something that they were passionate about. Versus, versus people, people who just, just feed me. me. I don't care what it is <laughs> in front of me. Front of me. Right. Did you have anybody on your crew who was like, eh, eh. it's just something, it's something that, that fuels my body. body? Well, I think by the end we were all feeling that a bit because, you know, it was it was pretty intense. You can't leave. You can't leave that habitat at all. Um, and then we uh, would be so like sometimes overworked with tasks on purpose because the whole point was to stress us out and see the response then they'd be taking blood samples which for me that was started to put my iron levels pretty low so Uh sometimes i just wouldn't have the energy i'm just like feed me just heat it up (laughs) and one time we lost track of uh, i think it was tomato soup we were so busy with tasks so i i realized i didn't think that it was done yet so i put it for another round of heating and then we hear this explosion <laughs> like, <laughs> like oh no so go look in the whole toaster oven is just oh. in tomato soup. so now we have this no food and i had to clean all this stuff so oh the stress <laughs> i can imagine well the yeah. one thing that we had that you did that this is to talk, talk about, about going to mars, mars we had a lot more autonomy, autonomy i think, I think. And so, so we were, we were able, able to kind of do, do our thing. thing. And in fact, and in fact we, we set our own schedule, schedule uh, that we set uh, to, to for the four months, months. But, but it was it really interesting really to be able to, to make those make those for ourselves. ourselves. And did, yeah. you, did you get to choose you, what, what meals, meals you wanted to eat beforehand? Like the joining ISIS movement? Or did they take your money to eat things? So they structured it in a way, like, for example, the breakfast bars, we had the days we had to eat those for the mm-hmm. purposes of the experiment. Um, and then other days, they there was a choice. 
Yeah, like we could decide, for example, okay, I want this starter or this meal. Um, so we did have some of that. Like we had a whole pile of food that we could choose from, say with okay. desserts, and we would trade stuff. Uh, <laughs> like I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the desserts, for example, were always the, the trading currency. Uh, but yeah, there definitely was not autonomy like you had, like the ability to cook like that because we just had the hot water and the toaster oven so really you can't be super creative like i think nowadays if i were to go in i'd be like okay maybe i can make something happen and blend things but at the time i wasn't really thinking that because i was just as the commander i was also just stressed out constantly with like making sure everything's going smoothly that i didn't have as much time to think about it but you're right food is mood and perhaps if i had concentrated a bit more on that and creating these cool experiences that i could have could have aided in some of those lower moments so when you're, when you're thinking, thinking about, about uh, uh, going, going, I, I'm going to diverge for a minute because I want to get, get into, into when, you're when you're thinking about food, food maybe being on the mood, mood eating, eating, having some, having some uh, uh, astronaut ice cream, who would you want there with you and why? Who would you want to eat fries with? Oh, man. Well, Two people come to mind just from the uh, perspective of the moon, Neil Armstrong. You know, what was that like? I would just absolutely love to to pick his brain about what that those first steps were. Um, and then Carl Sagan. You know, if uh, Carl Sagan is someone who's just an incredible science communicator and someone I've been really trying to emulate in some of my own uh, science communication from the perspective of geology and nature. Um, just to get people excited uh, about about everything on the planet and about space, the cosmos, as his show was, and just wanting to understand everything from opinions on space, life in the universe, and religion. You know, he just covers that whole realm and just really picking his brain with a moon setting like that would be <laughs> fantastic. Right. Right. You know, I grew up with the cosmos. And um, um, just, just a role, just model. role model. And what I love and about him is that he has that unique has way, a unique of, way of, thinking. of thinking. And here, right. and here, here now, here. like his cadence was yeah. off, and I, was I have a kid that's not, not kind of like normal. Kind of like and so normal. I always think, well, Carl so can do it. I can do it. Nice. And so, um, I know you applied um, for the astronaut program you in 2017 and you made the top 110, right? Or 120. Yeah. How did you like going yeah. on the Space Center for those? Was it three days of interviews? Like, was it three days of interviews? So, yeah, so I was actually um, in Hera, um, in the habitat, when I got a call to come down to the airlock. They're like, the commander needs to report to the airlock. And the airlock is where you get private calls. So I'm like, uh oh something happened at home am i kicked out of hera because my iron levels are too low who knows right all these thoughts are racing through my head so I go down there put on the headphones and it was the uh, astronaut office like do you want to interview for the program I'm like what <laughs> yes <laughs> when and so it was going to happen right after hera so i was already at the johnson space center um so i told them you know i thankfully had put up an away message on my email because i think i from what I've heard, if you miss a call or an email, that's it. You might not even be considered. So I was really happy I put an away message with a phone number uh, for someone who could they could be in contact with. So yeah, the the days right after Harrow were intense for me for the uh, interview process because I was so like shell shocked from the experience of 30 days in confinement um, and being with the same people that all of a sudden there's all these new people around. Um, you know, all the other people who are interviewing with me, the whole room full of astronauts and doctors and psychiatrists are like, uh, <laughs> so I, I feel like perhaps it wasn't the best, uh, easiest interview experience. It was, um, of course, it, you know, it was pretty intimidating because it was just, <laughs> some of these people are my heroes, you know, that are now asking me all these questions. But at the same time, I'm like, I'm really grateful that I had the opportunity to interview. I went through that whole And I know that you, we only have a few minutes left. I know that you applied in this round, um, and I, I'm going to share my little yeah. wisdom with you because well, in 2009, you know that I was a finalist, well, in 2009, and I, I finalist. met Jessica and in here. I, she was in my Jessica 10 that right, went through, yeah. was and it's funny because out of the people who I interviewed with, and I met her, I was like, there's a future astronaut. 
Seriously, and and, and when I've been oh. following your career and, and stuff and, 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 and the things that you do and stuff, and just even though I'm talking to you now, I I get that same feeling. Like I'm like, oh, I, I, I there's a future like, astronaut, and so I just want to share that with you. And so I just want to say, good luck with everything coming up. She did not get selected in 2009, and she got selected the the year later. I'm the next call astronauts. Call. Yeah. Well, thanks very much. You know, it's like, it's, you know, it's just one of those things that the chances are so slim, you know, it's a long right. shot, but at the same time, you got to try. I, I love the saying that mm -hmm. dreams don't work unless you do, right? It's good to have those big dreams. So long as you're also rooted firmly in reality, you know, paying the bills, the things you have to do, you know, here on earth. And meanwhile, you know, work towards it. Don't just dream, but work towards it. Um, and at the same time, making sure it's a passion, right? Like for me, it turned out that the passion was more in the geologic sciences than it was in astronomy. I still love astronomy and as a hobby, you know, like, and to go look out the stars and telescope, but the passion was geology. And as soon as I started pursuing that, everything else started to kind of fall into place. Like all these opportunities came about. And I think that's a key in life to be happy, you know, is to be content and to try your best but realize you know some of these things these big things might not happen but so long as you're basing your life on something you absolutely yep. love doing, and that's exactly the right philosophy great. and can you tell people exactly right how to follow you oh yeah coming sure yeah so on facebook it's just science in the wild you could just look it up it's a um it's got its own page science in the wild dot com and then at science yep. in the wild on Instagram. <laughs> I think on Twitter, it's missing the I. I think it's science and the wild, but I, I'm not really active on Twitter. I just I, I have a hard <laughs> time managing all these things. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then I think you had my name at the, right, you had my name at the beginning because it's a crazy spelling um, to follow me personally on Facebook, Liana Hardisky. And yeah, we look forward to, um, you know, to eventually getting back to expeditions and creating new experiences. So the expeditions are based on like citizen science, right? So getting people interested and involved in science while on uh, adventures uh, out in the wild, like Kilimanjaro or Everest Base Camp, kind of enhancing your experience. Don't just be a tourist, but actually learn about the landscape, the people, and maybe help with some conservation through science. Um, but at the same time, like not everyone might be interested in research and actually actively like involving themselves in science on expeditions. So I'm creating these experiences. You can go on week long things or it's a work in progress right now. But one of the ideas we have is Iceland in the footsteps of the astronauts because the Apollo astronauts trained you right in the interior of Iceland. So having a week long trip, like kind of more science education, but um, no emphasis on like collecting data. Wow, just that's enjoying fantastic. The I can't thank you enough for coming on the show. Um, I, um, just love following I, you, and I can't wait to go on, a, on an expedition with you. you. Me too. For those of you, <laughs> you, you that are listening, yeah. thanks again for tuning in. <laughs> and and join us next week when we have another whole show. Join us next week when we have another Bye, everyone. Yes. <laughs> Bye, everyone.